Hey friends, what have we here? We have another wedge problem. We have a challenge problem. This one, this one's pretty challenging. I have to give, I have to, I have to say it's pretty challenging. Any of these roller problems, these wedge problems, pretty tricky stuff. So find the largest weight of the wedge that can cause motion. Now again, what is motion? Okay, what can happen here? Well, number one, this wedge could slide down B could slip and this roller would roll away, okay? That would mean A doesn't slip and B does slip, so then this would roll this way. Or, this could be very griptitious up here, very grippy, and this could be very slippy, and then when the wedge goes down, this thing would spin out, right? It would, it would spin backwards. So what happens? Does B slip or does A slip? Well, they tell us that A and C is 0.5. So here and here, the wall is 0.5. And at point B, it's 0.6. So that tells me that this is a little bit more grippy than this is down here. This is more slippy, okay? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to work this problem and assume point A slips and point B does not slip. And then I'll come back and check point B and make sure that, I, that I'm right, okay? So, how do you do this problem? Well, number one, you got to take it apart and draw a free body diagram of the pieces and see what's going on. Okay, so we got two pieces. We got one piece here, and we got one piece here. Okay, I told you that the secret of all these friction problems, especially the wedge problems, well, all the friction problems, is good free body diagrams. So what I want you to do now is push pause and draw the free body diagrams, and then come back and let's see if we get the same thing. Ready, set, go. All right, did you put some arrows on them? Are you back? Let's see if me and you get the same thing. I'm gonna tell you a couple things right quick. This, this wedge here is 30 degrees, and the diameter of this roller is 0.5 feet, okay? So the diameter, I'm sorry, that's not diameter, is it? That's radius. The radius is 0.5 feet. All right, so let's see if you put the right forces on your free body diagram. Okay, let me see if I've got a red pen in my pocket. In my pocket, I do have a red pen. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to put some forces on here. Okay, I know that this guy... Is eight pounds. I like to put the Gibbons on first. And I know that this is W. Okay. Now I'm gonna put my normal forces on, and that's where two bodies are in contact. That's perfectly normal, right? A normal force where things are touching. So I have this. So normal at point A. I have up here the normal at point B, and up here, there's the other normal at B, and then over here, normal at C, okay? So let's see, I'm assuming that A is going to slip, so this thing is spinning this way, so which way is friction going? Friction doesn't like it spin that way, so friction's going to push this way. Okay, it's going to oppose that motion. Just think of that line going that way, right? As it spins, the line is going that way, so friction goes the opposite direction. Now, you can almost do this in your head, right? You know that this goes to the center, this goes to the center, okay? So this guy has friction up here, okay? Friction B, and which way does it go? Well, think about this. If you took a moment here, you're knocked out, you're knocked out, you're knocked out. This guy makes me spin anti-clockwise, so this one must have to go clockwise. There you go. And we know if he goes that way over here, then over here he has to go that way. Okay. And then finally over at C, the wedge wants to slide down the wall, so friction's going up the wall, right? And there you go. That's it. So that if your free bodies look like that, step one, you're acing this, okay? If they don't, we're going to have some troubles. So I hope they look just like that, okay? All right, so from that, 
let's see what we have here. We need to, so the only one, this guy, we ass, we're assuming FB is not slipping, okay? Is not slipping. It's the gription one, okay? So he is not going to be fun friction. NC is slipping, okay? So, I mean, I'm sorry, FC is slipping, right? The wedge is sliding down the wall. So this guy is fun friction, so FC is going to be, what is C? 0.5? NC, okay? 0.5 NC. Uh, NB is not slipping, so that means that the friction here is just going to be another unknown. It's just going to be FB. We got to go solve it and see what it is. And then finally down here, this guy is slipping on the floor. That's what I'm assuming, and point A again is 0.5. So this guy becomes 0.5 NA, okay? So I think the best thing to do now is let's write the equations of equilibrium for this free body here. We'll call this free body number one, okay? We'll call this one free body diagram number two. Okay, so for number one, we have the sum of the forces in the X, and we have the sum of the forces in the Y. So I think this is gonna give us two equations, two unknowns, maybe we can use our system solver and knock this out. Okay, so in the X, what do you see? I got this guy, 0.5 NA. Ooh, and then we got to do some angleism up here, don't we? Okay, so let's see here. We know that it's easier. Look at that. Just that simple. Just draw a horizontal and a vertical line. I start seeing things, right? They told me that this was 30, okay? Which means that this right here is 30, okay? If that is 30, then this over here is 60. Okay, this here is 60 degrees. And let's see, what else does that tell me? That this, this has to be 60, so that makes this over here 30. Okay, because NB and FB are 90 degrees apart, right? So then if that's 30, that has to be 60, that has to be 30, okay? And so let's write our equations. We've got to break some things into components, but we can do it, can't we? So we're doing X. I got this one, and now I'm going to have FB. I'm going to do FB cos 60. And I'm going to also do uh, minus NB cos 30. Okay? Genius. And then, uh, is that all my X forces? One, two, three. I got all three of them. Okay, so in the Y... I have NA, I have minus 8, I have minus uh, FB sine 60, and I have minus NB um, sine 30. Okay, well that has what, uh, three unknowns, right? I've got FB, I got NB, and I got NA. I got three unknowns with two equations. Not good. Maybe we need another equation. Let's get another equation, shall we? Uh, how about this guy? This equation here. Some of the moments about, oh, we'll just call it O for the middle of the circle, right? Here's point O right there, okay? So if I take the moment there, what gets knocked out? Well, you're knocked out, you're knocked out, you're knocked out. So what is it left with? It tells me that FA equals FB, doesn't it? Because it's FB times a radius going one way, FA times a radius going the other way, which means from this, FA is equal to FB, right? And what is FA equal to? 0.5 NA, okay? Which means if we solve for NA here, right? NA equals 2FB, okay? Now, because what I need here, look at what, you gotta be thinking ahead, right? Because eventually I'm trying to work my way over to this free body and solve this so that I can get W. And what do I need for that? Well, I need, what I need is I need to know what is NB and what is FB, right? So I really want these two equations over here to give me NB and FB. That's what I want, okay? So I want to get rid, in these equations, I want to get rid of NA, okay? Because I don't want him. I'm sorry, NA, but you're just unwanted, okay? 
So I'm going to substitute that in for Na. Okay, so here I have what? This is going to equal um, 2, right, I'm substituting in here, 2Fb um, times, times a half. And 2 times a half is what? Just 1. So, so that becomes just, um, that just becomes uh, Fb, doesn't it? Plus, cosine of 60 is 0.5, so plus 0.5 Fb. Whoa, that's a, that B is way too big. Okay. And then minus Nb cos 30, so minus uh, cosine 30 is 0.866. Uh, Nb. Okay. And all of that equals to zero. And so I can simplify that a little bit more, and that equation becomes 1.5 Fb minus 0.866 Nb equals to zero. Okay? There is equation number one. That comes from my x, right? Now we're going to do Fy. What is that going to be? Okay, that becomes substituting 2Fb. Okay, I plugged that in for Na. Uh, I'm going to leave the 8 because I'm going to move the 8 to the other side over there. Sine of 60 is uh, 0.866, so minus 0.866fb. And then this guy, sine of 30, is a 0.5, isn't it? So that's going to be minus 0.5nb equals 8. Okay? And then consolidating a little bit, I can subtract that off of, no, I can subtract that off of that. And that's going to give you, what does that give you? Here we go. Here we go. Clear. Um, two. What? No. What am I doing here? Oh, yeah. Two minus 0.866. 1.134. So this becomes 1.134 FB um, minus 0.5 NB equals 8. Okay? And there, my friends, is equation 2. So we've got our handy-dandy system solver. Let's just plug that in and see what we get. Save ourselves some algebra here. So it equals, um, let's see, FB is equal to 29.86. And these are in pounds. And NB is equal to 51.7. Okay, so that is good stuff there, isn't it? Okay, so we have solved this free body to get the information we need to solve that free body. So I'm going to erase this, and let's go back and then write the equations for that, and let's see if we can finish this problem up. All right, one more set of equations. Let's see if we can knock this out one more time. I'm just going to help myself and draw myself a couple of lines, which tells me that what... Uh, if that's 30, if that's 30, then this is 30, then that's 60, right? That this is 30 over here. I'm going to erase that. Okay. This is a 30 degree angle there. And this, let's see, if that's 30, then that's 60, then this is 30 degrees over here. Okay. Don't mess that up, okay? Work your angles around and make sure you have it correct, okay? All right, so I'm going to write the force X, force Y for this guy. And let's see what we get. Because we already know, we know you, and we know you, don't we? Okay? So some of the forces in the X, and some of the forces in the Y. So in the X direction, what do we have? We got, uh, we got NB... Cos 30, and NB is 51.7. Okay. Who else do we have? We have U minus FB, which is 29.86, uh, sine of 30. And then in the X, who else do we have? Minus NC. And I don't know what NC is. Oh, but I'm fixing to, right? I know NC now, don't I? So in the X direction, I only had one, two, three guys, and I got three terms, so I'm good. In the Y, in the Y direction, 
We have NB sine 30, which is 51.7. And then we get plus uh, FB, which is 29.86, cosine of 30. And then who else do we have? We have plus this guy, plus 0.5 NC, and then minus W. Since all this equals to zero, I can, I can just move the W to the other side and I can put equals W there, couldn't I? Okay, so one, two, three, four things in the Y direction. One, two, three, four. Always good to check, right? Okay, so from the first equation, I'm going to get NC. NC is equal to, here we go, let's get it, 51.7, um, cos 30, minus 29.86, whoa, got to put a parentheses in there, minus 29.86 sine of 30 equals 29.84. Okay, so there's NC. I can come in and plug that back in down here, right there. Let's get W. Okay, so 51.7 sine of 30 plus 29.86 cosine of 30 plus 0.5 times NC, which is 29.84. Whoa! That should be times times 29.84 equals 66.63. So W equals 66.6 pounds, okay? So that's W, okay? So one thing we need to do is go back and let's check FB. In order to make FB slide, right, what is his very maximum that he could have handled there, right? How much was FB? FB was 29.86. But for FB, like, remember I said friction is somewhere between zero and max, right? So what would F, FB's max would have been what? Would have been mu times n, right? So FB's max would have been, what was B? B is uh, 0.6. So his max would have been 0.6 times NB, which was 51.7. Okay, so for, for FB to be a slippy instead of a grippy, he would have been, his maximum that he can take is 51.7 times 31, no, 51, duh, 51.7 equals, good night, I can't even put this in my calculator, 0. 0.6 times 51.7, 31.02. So in order for that to slip here, right? This friction, the most he can hold is 31.2, 31.02. That's the most he can hold. Well, how much did he have to hold? Only 29.86. So he didn't slip. If, it, if that number would have been more than that, then he would have slipped, right? But it's less. So he didn't slip. Our assumption was correct, okay? So there, right there is our correct W, okay? Guys, that's about as hard as I can throw at you for a test question. It's one of these round roller slipping. They're kind of confusing. So I hope that that helps, and I'll see you on the next video.